I'm going to start the prelude now, Dick. Okay, I'm recording. Everything is stupid to you.
welcome you all to worship at uh, St. Luke Evangelical Lutheran Church in Glen Ellen, Illinois, here on the fourth Sunday of Advent, the 20th of December, 2020, here with uh, my friends, uh, Parker and Andrew. Andrew has uh, come out today as a nudist. Um, he has decided he did not want to wear clothes. Um, so he is uh, having fun, but he's here for the children's time. A few quick notes on our worship. Uh, the uh, outline was emailed to you on Thursday. Uh, it will also be on all of the PowerPoint slides throughout the worship service. Uh, after worship, uh, we will have our fellowship hour uh, that will conclude. We'll have the uh, no postlude and we'll just go right into the fellowship hour here on Zoom. For Christmas, uh, we have uh, four services that will happen throughout the season of Christmas. Uh, the first, can you sit back, Parker? will be our Christmas Eve service this coming uh, Thursday evening uh, at four o'clock. I guess that's still late afternoon. Uh, we'll be meeting here on Zoom. That will be a, a festival of lessons and carols. On Christmas Day, we'll have a recorded uh, service, which will be uh, basically our Christmas Day service that we've always done. Uh, it will be recorded for you to watch on YouTube. On uh, Christmas, or on the first Sunday of Christmas, next Sunday, we will have, okay, you want to get up? Yeah, we're going to read the book. Yep. On the first Sunday of Christmas, we have a special service from the Metropolitan Chicago Synod. Uh, that will be uh, lessons of carols uh, from all over the Synod. Uh, I do believe they're going to be using different lessons and carols than we used in our Christmas Eve worship. So that should be uh, uh, different than the service that we had. And then we will meet together live again on Zoom uh, in, for Sunday worship in two weeks on the 3rd of January, and that will be the second Sunday of Christmas. Anything else I'm missing? I think that was the major thing. Continue with our gathering song. Uh, the angel Gabriel from heaven came, offers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. All right, now we have our children's time. Uh, our one, uh, or we have the lighting of the wreath, and then we'll have the children's time. Go back to the lighting of the wreath, sorry.
do you, would you like to do the children's part first to make the kids happy? That's fine with me. I want to. All right, Parker, you yeah, said I thought so. We're going to read <laughs> the story, gospel story from our children's Bible. It's about the angel's visit. And it says, Mary was a beautiful young woman. She lived in a town called Nazareth and was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. One day, a tall and handsome man appeared in front of Mary. His clothes were brilliant white. His hair was dark and curly, and his eyes sparkled like lights. I'm going to keep it on the stand, bud. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. Mary said that. His voice scared her. Don't be afraid, he said. God sent me to tell you that you're going to have a son. He knew name him Jesus. He's going Thank to be you. very important to many people. A son? But I'm not married yet, she said. How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel replied. Your son will be the son of God. The son of God? My son? Mary thought about all these things. It didn't seem possible, but she believed anything was possible for God. For God. I am God's servant. I'll do whatever God says, she said. So that's our story. And it reminds us that we all are called by God at different times to do things like be nice and kind to love our neighbors. Can you tell us, do you think about a time when you've loved your neighbor or maybe your brother lately, Parker? Yeah, go, Dada. Bye. All right, you're going by. Okay, we'll say a prayer. God, we give you thanks that you have called us to follow you. And we pray that we always, like Mary, take up uh, the call and uh, trust in you to lead us and guide us. Okay, you're going to say goodbye? Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Into the camp. We praise you, O oh God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may sing of your advent among us in the world made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go do all that you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved from, uh, Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. 
and I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so they may live in their own place and be, dis and be disturbed no more and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. A reading from Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be, be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. It's not a touch Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Praise o Christ. O Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends in Christ, we hear in our second reading from Romans that the faith that has been given to us in the waters of baptism, which Paul has proclaimed throughout the letter, is meant to bring about the obedience of faith. It's the faith that we've been given as a gift in the waters of our own baptism, a faith that could be summed up uh, most concisely by saying that in Jesus, we no longer have to do anything, but we get <coughs> everything. Having to do things implies an obligation. The getting to do things provides an opportunity. Having to do things is that kind of drudgery of doing something even though just to get it done, even though you know you're not going to particularly enjoy it. But getting to do something is the joy of exploring and finding and discovering the things that you never thought that you would enjoy. We hear this in our gospel today, where Mary, in a passage that probably most of us are somewhat familiar with, is encountered by the angel Gabriel, who proclaims to her the good news that she has been chosen out of all of the young women in Israel to be the mother of the baby Jesus, to bear the Christ child into the world. This is not something that Mary has to do. God can find other young women who would do this task and bear the Christ child into the world. It's something that she gets to do. Nothing less than making the impossible possible. The impossible idea that God, who created the world and everything in it, would be born in the flesh of a human being. But not just any human being. A young girl, probably about 13 years of age, just entering into her adulthood. A young woman who... Uh, could face a lot of ostracization for being pregnant at such an age when she's only betrothed and not yet married. The good news that Mary will later testify to in her Magnificat, that God has cast down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, that God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty, that God has always remembered God's people and promise to care for them. It's the same gift that we are given in the waters of our own baptism, where not the angel, but the Holy Spirit comes to us and says, welcome chosen one of God, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. And reminds us that God has chosen us out of all of the people in the earth to bear the Christ child, to bear the baby Jesus into the world and proclaim the good news that even, yes, in our day and time, God is still casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, filling the hungry with good things and sending the rich away empty and remembering God's people down to this very day. It's not a proclamation that's always easy to make. I can testify from watching Sarah go through two pregnancies, and I'm sure that all of the mothers here and the fathers who watch their uh, beloveds go through pregnancy uh, can well testify that pregnancy is uh, not the faint of heart or anything that is uh, particularly easy or simple to go through. And yet it's the opportunity that Mary has, that opportunity that she gets to do, that even though it's not going to be easy, it's opening up this new uh, joyous where she finds this new creation God is making for her, this new life that she didn't even know she would enjoy. Following Jesus in our time may not be particularly easy either, we're much more likely in our culture to lift up the mighty and cast down the lowly or to fill the rich with more and more and send the hungry away empty, to forget about the people that matter to Jesus in, our, in this world and in our cultures. 
and to claim otherwise can sometimes set us apart from others in our world. It can make us look different or make us sound different to think that Jesus is passionately concerned about the least of these in our world. But it also, for us, as for Mary, opens us this new world that we never thought we would enjoy so much, but that we can be sure is more wonderful and more glorious than the one that we would have lived otherwise. That is what the Holy Spirit opens up for us when we're called and we no longer have to do anything, but we get to do it. We get to experience the love and joy of the gospel and going out and sharing the good news of the love of Jesus with others. This is, of course, the challenge in our contemporary time where our churches are having to face uh, challenges and decisions and all kinds of things that churches in at least decades, generations, and probably very many generations have not had to face. But the challenge for us is to think not so much in terms of what we have to do. The things that we think we have to do, like maintaining the building or having worship a certain way or keeping our attendance up or our Sunday school open or all these other measures that we can do to measure what a successful church is. But what are the things that we get to do? Here at St. Luke, our mission, as we've said, is to spread God's word of peace, hope, and love to everyone, everywhere we go. How do we get to do that in our daily lives, telling family and friends and our neighbors about the difference that God and Jesus has made in our lives? How God has turned us from death to life how God has brought us into this new reality to discover a world that God is creating that we never realized we would enjoy living in so much. Loving and serving, caring for the least of these, fighting for justice and peace, and bringing about the truth that the, in Jesus, the kingdom of God has come near. It's the calling that we experience each week when we gather around the table, where we hopefully come and gather with our fellow sisters and brothers in Christ, not because we have to, Sunday obligation, but because we get to. We get to come and in the words proclaimed and in the meal shared with all of the faithful gathered around the table, we get to experience the risen Christ among us, transforming our lives and sending us out in joy to love and serve our neighbor, to spread God's word of peace, hope, and love to everyone, everywhere we go. It's the invitation that we're given every week. It's the invitation we trust that the Holy Spirit given to us in our baptism is helping us to say, like Mary, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Is there communion? The hymn of the day is number 257, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 through 4.
with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for our church that we may, may bear the good news of Jesus into the world. Especially we pray for all churches who are awaiting the coming of Jesus this Advent. We pray for our community that we make the impossible possible in loving and caring for others. Especially we pray for the Glen Ellen Food Pantry, People's Resource Center, Humanitarian Service Project, and DuPage Pats. We pray for our nation that we may build houses that will last forever. Especially we pray for restaurants and small businesses, for doctors, nurses, first responders, caretakers, and all frontline workers, retirement homes and nursing care facilities, and for all persons and families. We pray for our world that we may give thanks to you for all you have done. Especially we pray for those who have COVID-19, for the family and friends of those who have died from COVID-19, and for all who are instrumental in distributing and administering the vaccines for COVID-19. We pray for St. Luke, that we may continue to faithfully minister to our community during this pandemic. Especially we pray for Al, Betsy, Betty, Charles, Jean and Rudolph, Joe, Judy, Kathy, Kristen, Lois, Sally, Tim, and Zachary, who are ill or recovering, for Deanna, Ellen, Judy, Marilyn, and Roger, and Nancy, who are not with us in worship, and for the saints who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else shall we give thanks or pray today? We would like to give thanks for our friend Bob, who after several months of being homeless, guy is now working two jobs, driving one of them is driving a bus for first student. And about a week ago, he moved into an apartment with him and his son. Lord, we give thanks and we pray for a continued progress in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. I'd like to give thanks today for the memory of my Uncle Harold, who died on Thursday. He was my dad's closest brother and a real gentle giant. His soul is so kind. He was so good to his nieces and nephews, and uh, he lived a wonderful life. Uh, we pray that the memory of Uncle Harold be a blessing to all of us and uh, give thanks that he's no longer suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I like to raise a prayer for the family of Rano Moreno, my longtime landscaper who passed away last night from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we uh, pray for the family of Rebecca and uh, Jake Seip. Um, and their son Owen. Uh, Rebecca is the son of, or the daughter, I'm sorry, of uh, Jeff and Susan Shu, um, who lost their son Charles uh, to a premature birth uh, this past Friday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. your prayer. I give thanks that our son Corey arrived safe and sound last night. Um, good to have him home. The Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another, and then uh, as the special music is playing to uh, uh, prepare your uh, communion elements for the celebration of the Lord's Supper.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. I'm sorry, pray after communion. Assisting, or... Almighty God bless you, or the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Um, whoever's assisting minister, can you do the prayer after communion, please? Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercies, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. All right, folks. Thank you for another uh, wonderful worship service. Thank you, Charles. Now you can all unmute so that you can uh, have fellowship hour. I hope some of you will stay for fellowship just for a short while, whatever time you've got. It's just nice to see people and know you're here. There we are. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Rosemary. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. It's good to see everybody. How is your family? Uh, my mother is is doing very nicely, and my sister is a little slower in recovering, but they're coming along. Thank you. Oh, good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> good I'm to see morning. you. Esther, Esther joining us today to make out donations. <laughs> Say that again, Dick. Please, Dick. How did the food pantry come out with the donations that were requested this year? You mean the food pantry? Food pantry or the yeah. Good Samaritan Fund with the cookies? No, food no, pantry. The the food pantry. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't have uh, the exact uh, numbers with me. Uh, are you talking about the uh, fund for the uh, new food pantry? Well, that more generally, just how did they, how were, how did we come out in terms of giving to the food pantry from St. Luke and what you know about it generally? Oh, um, well, I know when we had uh, a food drive in March, uh, or no, excuse me, January, we collected um, about 400, or that was June, excuse me, about $400 that we sent. Um, and then there were about uh, 12 bags of food that went down. And so, um, I, pretty good. I think just about the same as, as always. Um, I think more people uh, sent money to the church and then we sent them a check. And there may have been members that sent money directly to the pantry from their homes. So, um, Wasn't there that, a matching thing going on this month with uh, somebody donating $30,000 or something if they would 